What is going on out there, peeps? All right, so let's get into some of the latest and greatest news. I told you guys I had a special guest that's going to be coming on. I'm going to get to her shortly. And boy, does she have a lot to talk about that should make your ears perk right on up. Before we get into it, though, let me do what we call the unpleasantries for some of you because <laughs> they complain all the time. You guys know that if you're going to buy gold and silver, go check out our friends over that Money Metals Exchange. The link is down below in the description. First time buyers, if you spend more than $100, use promo code PIMPY, P-I-M-P-Y, and you will get a free half ounce of silver. And we love free 99. For those of you looking for my address, there it is right here. And you guys know I have an alternative website where I could post videos that there's no way in God's green earth I would even attempt to post on YouTube without having them remove me altogether. All right, so you are aware of it. There is some new ones coming up here shortly. So now allow me to make a very special introduction here. On the phone with me here is Linda Forsyth. And when I told you guys that there was a hand group of people that were actually involved with the tribunals over in Gitmo. Linda is one of them. Linda, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> well, hello, hello, Pimpy. Thank you so much for having me on. You're so welcome. I can't tell you how excited I am about having you on here. I have been struggling with people on YouTube. I'm trying to figure out a polite way to word this. Is, we see so many of these videos that are out there, these people claiming that they have this intel and that intel and that this politician and that famous person has been set to Gitmo, has been tried, has been executed. Have you ever heard of anything like this? <laughs> <laughs> I've been struggling with this for years, Pimpy, and I've done multiple videos. I want to thank you for uh, replaying one of them uh, because of, I guess one person coming out saying that there was a certain <laughs> uh, individual, I'm not even going to name names anymore, that was in Gitmo and it was ready to be hanged in the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank you for putting that out there. Um, I've kind of come to the conclusion that we can only say so much that people just absolutely refuse to believe you. And that's okay. You know what? It's it's everyone's choice. Yes. I will continue to let people know what I have found out to be absolutely fake and what you have also. I deeply appreciate that. But I'm going to continue to focus and not have any more diversions and letting people know what's really going on with Gitmo and then provide absolute unequivocal proof that <laughs> anybody who so desires... To find out if it's true, they can find out themselves. I will point them exactly where to go and what to look at. They can look at transcripts. They can look at uh, any type of rulings judges make. They can, they can look at who is on trial, exactly what the situation is behind it. Uh, they can look at the calendar to know who is going to be on uh, or who is going to have uh, the various different uh, trials happening, etc. So that's what I'm going to focus on. Yes. Um, so, Sea Vine, if you don't mind, I, I want people to be aware of this. Sea Vine News Networks, you guys, just so you know, that's where Linda is. They have a lot of great articles over there. But also, in addition to that, on the video that I did, you know, Linda pointed out if you, instead of listening to what everybody's saying about who was there, who was executed, you can literally go to the website. And you can fact check what's being reported. It tells you, it, it goes back years. Is that right, Linda, the cases? Well, yes, it's, um, <laughs> it's through the Office of Military Commissions, which is uh, what deals with Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and the tribunals, and so on. So it is maintained by them. And I also have a phone number and an email address that I want to provide everybody. You pick up your phone. And call this guy. Or you can send an email if you don't want to just deal with uh, uh, going on to their website and looking things up and ask questions. You can actually find out that way. And it's it's a verifiable phone number, uh, etc. So what Seavine is, it's really not a news agency. This is something I wanted to make clear 
to, sure. you, to you, Gimpy, and to others that are listening. This is a grassroots project that was created for we the people who are all sick and tired of the misleading disinformation, not knowing what is true, not even beginning to learn and bringing together individuals that have talents in their particular areas that we're all joining together in like a proverbial village, whichever. We have all sorts of private investigators, licensed private investigators. Some of them are retired, uh, former police. We have former military. We have individuals in IT. We have individuals with all different types of areas, housewives, uh, people you know, specialize in accounting, everything. We all join together and work on what it is that we have our area of expertise. And so the investigations come from individuals who are licensed investigators. If we find something that is very interesting and we want to know if it's credible, we have an entire team of volunteers. Nobody is getting paid. And they, they look into it and find the proof to go with it. We have all kinds of citizen journalists who have history of knowing how to write or uh, individuals that have actually been reporting news on mainstream media in the past that have come with us to some of our uh, places to be able to prove or film the news as it's going on, like we did on January 6th at, uh, in Washington, D.C. So these are the people that's working with us. So I, I oh, sorry. To, Go ahead. I just wanted to say, I wanted to announce to the audience, because this is a foundation, it is a charitable trust. It is run by a board of trustees. Nobody will ever own Seavine. We do not have any commercials at all. So nobody can say, well, you're gonna talk about this or I'm not going to buy a commercial with you. We make it so we cannot be held hostage. So we are run by trustees, a group of trustees, and we all keep each other honest. Now this is something, Pimpy, um, I haven't even told you that uh, final uh, decision that was made, although I did discuss with you that I was uh, looking into this possibility. I have spoken with um, Ron Fleisvig at, uh, in Guantanamo Bay who is uh, the head of uh, basically all the news networks that come in there yes. Uh, yes. to be able to do things. I told him about you, Pimpy, and what you were doing because you know he's, he's as frustrated as anybody about the stuff that's getting out there. And I talked to our board of trustees and we all agree that we want to bring you on as one of the volunteers. Oh yes, in great, Seaborn. I love it. <laughs> And that means that you will be working with me and other individuals that have been approved or just regular people that are coming together with a heart to make certain people know what is going on. And uh, you'll be working with me having to do with the information about tribunals and you will have direct access, just like I do to some individuals to talk with. And uh, we will have this up on our Seavine channel, but Pimpy has our full permission to take previous videos that explain and teach what is going on, what has been going on, and educate uh, to be able to put it on his channel and make commentary. So congratulations, Pimpy. That's not something we give to very many people. Oh, I really, that's, I'm really honored by that. I appreciate that. I know we talked about it. And uh, I think it's important that people get the truth, but not only uh, about what's really going on in, in Gitmo, but all these, 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 I swear they saturate the entire YouTube sphere with, oh, this celebrity, that politician. And I'm like, there's no proof, you guys. There's none out there whatsoever. And I always end up somehow becoming a bad guy. Like I peed in somebody's Wheaties and I'm like, you know, why are you guys killing the messenger? The one thing about my channel I think people respect the most is I'm not going to sit there and blow smoke up the tuchus. I'm going to tell them the news, good, bad, or ugly. How they digest it is up to them. But when you hear these people out there say what they say, 
it starts to bring people to a certain place emotionally. And we know that on one other person's YouTube channel, one of his subscribers had committed suicide over things that were being said. I can tell you, I have personally walked a handful of people off the edge who feel like, you know what, there's no hope. Every time they're told on this date, this is happening, or this person was arrested, but now you see them live. And then you're told they're clones. I'm like, oh my God, people work with me. Stay grounded. We are all in the same boat. We all want the same thing. But you said something in that video that I did a reaction to that, that rings so true. We all want the same thing. We all want to see justice done. But my concern is I don't want people to want it so bad that you become vulnerable or receptive to fake news, you know? And so well, this is why we're going to work on it all together, Pimpy. Yes. And um, please forgive me for interrupting you, but no, I wanted people to understand one thing. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to go over and over and over. This guy's lying. That guy's lying, whatever. Whatever we present is going to have proof for you to fact check. So if you have a problem with whatever we are putting out there, do your fact checking above and beyond us or use what we show you we have and prove us wrong. Otherwise, anything else you say is conjecture. Yeah. Now, do you know I what the it. danger is about what is happening? The real danger, Pimpy, do you know what that is? I mean, I have my idea, but go ahead and share. Okay, let's let's pretend you're you're having a dream. You are dreaming the most wonderful dream ever, whatever that is to you. And you're fully enveloped in this dream. And then something wakes you up just for a moment and you smell smoke. And it's like, oh, well, maybe my house is burning, but hey, this dream is just too cool. And so you roll over and you go back to sleep to get back into the dream. That is what is happening to our country. We are being shown theater. Something that you desperately want to interact, feel, think, believe in order to keep the masses calm. Yes. To yes. toss a dog a bone, so to speak, to keep them occupied. Look over there, not here. America, your house is burning down. What I am going to talk about is when we do anything that's going on in Guantanamo Bay or the tribunals or whatever, I am not just going to talk about the KSM et al. tribunals, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed et al. tribunals, which is 9-11. I'm going to take you beneath the scenes and let you see the inner workings, the actual inner mechanisms of what is making the machine function and what you're going to see there is what's really going on and scary. Yes. yes. Now, um, we're going to keep this, this interview short, but I want to leave a thought for everybody to consider. We know 9-11 happened in 2001. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was actually finally arrested in 2003. It is now, what, August? 2021, yes. 20 years later, 20 years later, 9-11, one of the most horrific terrorist things that have ever happened, has not even gone to trial. That is just mind blowing. I remember you and I talked about this. It's and people, I think, would be trial. Yeah, people would be surprised to find out that none of them have been to trial. Is that right? Well, there's more to this. Okay. It has not gone to trial, nor will it be able to go to trial. I've explained this in the past videos because of shenanigans of what the CIA has done. And the very last tribunal that was done for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed happened in January 2020, a year and a half ago. Very last one where the judge stated as a very last statement that he was going to throw the entire trial out of court because of shenanigans that the CIA was proven to have done. Two weeks after that, Judge Cohen announced he was going to be quitting out of the blue 
because of concerns for his family. And two weeks after that, in March, is when they shut down Gitmo for the most part, except for absolute essential people. And there have not been any tribunals since March of 2020. I can hear all the people screaming in the background. Well, yeah, what about yeah. this? What about that? It's like, okay, I was, I was whatever. <laughs> I, you know, whatever. Just letting you know that the 9-11 trials, Malik Sheikh Mohammed, have not been going on since March 2020. There have been some things that have happened in the meantime that are just downright scary. Uh, besides the fact that they continue to kick the can down the road, they were supposed to start up again in July last month, but they postponed it again. They were supposed to start up in September, September 6th, which is on the calendar if you go and look. And what has happened is the new COVID variant came out. A couple of the workers that were there in Guantanamo Bay got it, the Delta Delta variant. Mm -hmm. And now, mm -hmm. even though it has not been announced yet, you know that you know what's going to happen. They're going to kick the can down the road. Okay, so here's the question I want you guys to consider. With something as absolutely important as 9-11, going on with the tribunals, which whether it is through the military or it's through federal court, the whole flipping system is broken. It's broken. It doesn't mean that the lawyers and the judges are not following rules, or rules and laws. It means that the rules and laws that have been put into place have created a system that easily can happen in all different circumstances. So if what is happening, let's say for the Arizona audits, or any a number of different things that show irrefutable proof. What do you think is going to happen? There's going to be kicking the can down the road for years and years, getting nowhere, uh, uh, that you absolutely have to go through this process and so on. So something's got to break really soon. It's got to break really soon. We in know the there's meantime. a lot going on, and we see that it looks like it's going to all happen at one time. You know, like you're saying, what we don't want to see is the same BS that's been going on now for 20-something years over there. We don't want to see that happen here, where people just get so tired of waiting that they just give up. We want results, and we want results now. But telling people that certain individuals have already been tried and executed and to sit back, eat popcorn because it's a movie. That's not what the hell I want people to think. I, it, if you're not actively involved or you think the bad guys have already been taken out, then people, are, in my opinion, are going to become complacent and they're going to think they're, there's nothing to worry about and then they're going to allow the bad guys to continue doing what they're doing until they get to a point where they're in position of power and they're damn near there now that there's nothing we can ever do because people are so busy getting fat on popcorn. Yep, that's pretty much it. But there's uh, a lot more to it that we can do. And that's why I want everyone to join this movement. Everybody is their own individual that's a volunteer with Seavine. You still maintain your own business, who you are, your own identity, if you want to do your own shows, if you whatever it is that you do, Pimpy is still going to be Pimpy and have all his different channels, but he's just a volunteer, all working together for one common cause. We need more volunteers just like you. You have a problem with what's going on? Volunteer. We'll put you in a position that you can do something about it where your particular area of expertise lays. There has been some things that have come out that I am going to let Pimpy, instead of going through all the history, you do need to know some of the history of what's happening to understand fully about what was found. Yeah, but there I was know. a document that I accidentally found last July that has a very significant part of something that just came out about 
a new ship, a new ship that, um, here, I'm trying to get to the picture of it. Sure, hold on. Let me get out of my screen sharing. Uh, there you go. Okay, so I'll do share screen. Yep. And it's coming up. Now, while that's going, I want to I want to lead into this just a tiny bit, if that's okay with you. So, so the so that you guys understand who Linda is and what she does. All right, you guys, because you're like, well, she's just somebody's reporting information. No, no, no. This woman has access to Gitmo. She could be over there, and she works with the, the, the with the DoD, right? Yes. Well, okay, uh, just like any civilian can we're just showing you how civilians can work with the dod nice. to find things out okay what this is here is uh some of you may have seen this but it was an announcement this one came on july 21st it says here she is folks the uss new york built from 24 tons of steel from the fallen towers of 9 11. notice the twin towers Today, the USS New York LPD-21 is one of the most state-of-the-art amphibious warships in the Navy's, Navy's fleet. It is a manned by a crew of 360 sailors and three permanently assigned Marines. Her motto is, strength forged through sacrifice, never forget. So what they did all those beams that uh, many, many places, including the KSM et al. team, defense team, wanted to go ahead and uh, do forensic, uh, oh, what's the word for it? They wanted to actually study the beams. Yes, forensic yeah. analysis. Yes, thank you. Um, that was refused. That was refused by the CIA, the government, to... Khalid Sheikh Mohammed et al. Their team, the defense team, they wanted to see if there was anything there that could prove that this was a demolition project, and so they absolutely refused it. What they did give them was hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation because of their own forensic analysis, but they would not allow it. There have been, um, I believe, it's the University of Alaska and some other places that have done forensic analysis. That proves that it was a demolition project, but through the documentation I found last year, none of that in any way, shape, or form was ever admitted to any of these quote-unquote free trials or discoveries. But what they did do since then is melted down those uh, great big huge metal beams that were in the towers basically destroying all evidence and creating a warship. So see here, is, uh, we, it, there's a, a documentary that came out that they bashed seven ways this and it was called 9-11 Loose Change. Somebody was trying to make a point about the towers and the metal and, and what you're talking about, the demolition. They yeah. had, you know, they did their thing. My thing is this, the, the the powers that be, the people that I believe that are behind a lot of questionable things without getting too crazy, um, they're so powerful that they're not going to, they're going to do damage control and they're going to smear anybody that talks about it. And if you're in a position of power, they'll remove you. Uh, you know, it's the, the alphabet people we're talking about. Right. We're starting to find out that these people have been behind a ton of things. Not that we're going to get too far into there, but this looks like, here we go. There's no way in how they're going to let this truth come out without people like us, citizen journalists. But again, you guys, we see that they are going to make a power grab. A quick blurb, just so you guys know, it's already being announced that they're going to force the vaccines through and make them official. Once they do that, the CDC is going to make a push to remove all websites that report what they deem as misinformation. So you can imagine all your citizen journalists, all those independent people that are not controlled by the powers that be are going to be wiped out. So you won't be able to get proper information. So let's hope that doesn't happen or that people find alternative ways to have a website up. 
Now, what I'm wondering about that is how protected would C Vine be? I wonder if could DOD do anything to make sure that C Vine is not removed? Well, <laughs> that, if things are a lot deeper on both ends in that, uh, C Vine isn't any one entity. Sure. C Vine is. We the people. So the people that are in it, that have the information, are spread out all over the world. That's awesome. That's how it should be. So uh, you take one down, even if they take down the website, there is a gazillion people that have information spread out everywhere. Now, what you see on the screen here, the reason I'm showing you this, is this is the one document I found in, uh, actually I found it in June of last year. It was brought out in March 2020, keep in mind that Trump is the one that opened up the pre-trials of military tribunals to citizens like us. I remember. And it started in January 2019. Now, I discovered this right after uh, the very last tribunal in 2020, after January, that I was told this document was so unusual to be found, and it's, it was a matter of public access, that at first I was worried about publishing it because I thought maybe it was still, um, you know, secured. It was uh, for, closed for national security. I can't think of the name of it. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Redacted it or whatever you want to call it. Right. But it is open for the public to see. You could still go find it on the website yourself if you want to it gives uh you can see it gives a number and exactly what it is what caught my attention <clears throat> is it was the government and or the cia's response to uh what was being compelled by the defense team and so it obviously had originally said from the defense team that they wanted the government storage transfer and or sale of 9-11 crime scene evidence. Let me re repeat that again. <clears throat> they wanted evidence, information related to the government's storage, transfer, and here's a biggie, and or sale of 9-11 crime scene evidence. Why word it like that? That's what really caught my attention. I expected it to come up and say that it was secured, but surprisingly it opened up. So I have an entire video that I did that Pimpy's gonna go over with you on all that. But what is interesting is the CIA refused to give even one tiny iota of information on any of this. So here's my thing about that. How can any, any anybody have a fair trial when the government is refusing to allow you access to evidence that might actually free you or prove you innocent. Now, what I noticed that again, not to get too sidetracked, I, I, I cannot believe I witnessed this. I never thought in my lifetime that I would ever see a sitting president be denied his constitutional due process in courts at every single level when he was denied the opportunity to prove evidence of a fraudulent election, they just said, we don't want to see the election. And they dismissed every case for procedural reasons. I, I just cannot believe that I watched that all the way through. So well, if they're doing it to a sitting president, what chances do we have if we ever end up in this situation? Well, they're doing it to everyone that doesn't fit within the narrative that they want to put out there, including Khalid Sheikh Mohammed et al. Now, I do believe these these guys are, personally, my opinion, <clears throat> are guilty. They've confessed. But they also have access and evidence to what else may have been going on behind the scenes that probably is being withheld. Yeah, no, you bring up a good point, and I wanted to bring that up. And I was going to say, I don't want people to misunderstand what we're saying. These people are guilty beyond a doubt. But we're talking about things inside their cases that point to 
some very, very nefarious things by our own intelligence agencies. So don't think we're trying to defend the terrorists because that's not what's happening. They've confessed to the crimes. What we're well, saying is there are some very <laughs> shocking things that people in the general public should be aware of. Some behaviors. One thing we're learning also is that in January 6th in the so-called insurrection, that a lot of FBI agents were dressed up as Trump supporters and they were trying to motivate the crowd into an insurrection. So this isn't the first time that our own intelligence agencies have been involved with some very shysty things, including Governor Whitmer's so-called attempted kidnapping. So uh, again, not to get too sidetracked. Go ahead, Linda, on this document you're showing us. That's okay. Um, I was going to, excuse me, go ahead and close off Okay. This interview with uh, two last thoughts. And that is, I don't know how many of you listening out there in the audience have ever been in the military uh, or even in police work. But if there is something that is privileged information that is of high security, what happens if you break that and you give out information that you shouldn't have? Now, all these individuals that are out there saying that they have privileged information or they know of a source, how long do you think the military, I mean, using your own knowledge of when you were in the military, for those that were, how long would it happen if something is threatening national security that those individuals would be hunted down? Oh, yeah. That's number one. Number two, remember what Trump said at the very beginning of his presidency, even beforehand, when he was running. I will not let the enemy know what my plans are. Yes. He's also a very strong advocate of Sun Tzu, who wrote The Art of War a couple of, you know, 2,000 years ago, which is why he put out The Art of the Deal, what has to do with things in being an entrepreneur, he is very, very adept at understanding the art of war. Everybody is confused, including the other side, because they're not getting any information. You're getting all the drama. You're getting all the theater. Nobody knows what's true. The 17th letter of the alphabet last post was in December of 2020 yes and then five months later in may there was another erroneous post that popped up and this is not verbatim but the gist of it is we're not going to tell you what's real you choose so if you want to keep looking at theater which is incredibly entertaining or you want to look at the real deal, which may be very mundane and boring, look at it instead as like, if you want to look at theater, a murder mystery, where everyone tries to figure out by noticing little clues, using critical thinking on who done it. That is the type of thinking that you should have. Instead of sitting there being spoon-fed a story You should be interactive, using critical thinking, watching for clues, connecting the dots, and doing what you can to figure things out on your own. Because you are not meant to know real dates, times, people, who done it. They're not going to tell you outright. They're not going to spoon feed it to you. They're going to divert you to keep you calm, keep your mouth shut. While, for instance, 20 years of pre-trials are still going on for 9-11. That's still a critical thing with that situation alone. Now, as I close out, Kempi is going to go over a couple of videos I sent him. There is one video that will make you smile that are going to be crumbs for you to be able to piece together and know that everything is going to be okay. But you check these crumbs out. You connect these dots yourself. 
you make certain that every single puzzle piece is valid yourself, just like the 17th letter of the alphabet spent a couple years doing, in my personal opinion, was to train you, to train you yes. to do your own research. Yes. But now it's gone. You're back to wanting to be spoon fed. Okay. Uh, Pimpy, <laughs> thank you so much for having me on. <laughs> Linda, thank you so much for coming on. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And tell everybody on the board, I am humbled and honored to be accepted and be a part of the team. I'm looking forward to working with you and making sure that, indeed, the truth gets out. Well, we are very honored to have you. And anyone else who wants to volunteer and, and commit your services or whatever, we'd love to talk to you. Just go to c find. C-Fine.com. There's places to volunteer or even donate to help us or read the news every single day. Our volunteers research and put up for you. And I will put the link to the network right underneath the video so you guys can go there. The other day I did a reaction video to one of uh, Linda's videos and I did put her information down there and where to contact them uh, so that you guys can go see again for yourself. I know a lot of people are going to be upset about what's being said because they are really are stuck in that the escapism. But, you know, again, we're going to get out there. We're going to get the truth. And when you get the truth and you share the truth with others, then that's how people become active, become aware. But if you're sharing the lies and they're so exaggerated that people are clones and stuff like that, that's when you start losing friends, fighting with your family members, and you get torn apart. So let's stick with what's real, what we can prove, and that will help us be a lot more successful, in my opinion. Linda, again, thank you so much for having, or coming aboard, <laughs> having me, coming aboard here and doing this video. I can't tell you how much uh, it means to me so that we can let people know, let's get the truth out there. And I look forward to working with you and the Seafine crew. Well, take care, Pippi. Everybody else, take you have a good one. And I'm done, and I'm out. <laughs>